Unit Four: The Journey Ahead. Read about it. I was twenty-five when I was arrested for stealing a loaf of bread to feed my starving family. For that minor criminal offense, I spent nineteen years in jail. When I was freed from prison, I was a bitter man. I walked for miles, trying to find somewhere to rest. By the time I reached Dean, the sun had already set, and I was hungry and exhausted. I headed for an inn, seeking accommodations for the night. Looking me up and down with doubt and suspicion, the owner of the inn sent a boy to the police station to inquire about me. When the boy returned, he submitted a brief report to the owner. Glancing through the note. The owner learned that my name was Jean Valjean and that I was an ex-convict. As a result, he refused to let me in. I departed the inn in humiliation. I could sense that hostile feelings toward me were aroused, and that my arrival would soon become the talk of the town. Just as I had expected, everyone in Dean knew that I was released on parole. Consequently, no one was willing to reach out to me, and even a glass of water was too much for me to ask for. Cold and starving. I was left shivering in the dark. Stamping down the streets, I stopped near a bishop's palace. Fortunately, the bishop took pity on me and welcomed me warmly. Even after he knew my true identity, this man didn't drive me out of his home as most others had done. Instead, he invited me to stay and dine with him. That night, though I was lucky enough to sleep in a bed for the first time in nineteen years, I couldn't fall asleep. I kept thinking about the precious silverware on the bishop's dining table. If it had not been for his invitation out of kindness and courtesy, I wouldn't have had temporary shelter. Yet, disturbed by the thought of how unfairly I had been treated over the past years, with only a slight hesitation, I got up, stole the silverware, and slipped away. However, I didn't get far. By the time it was dawn, the police had caught me and taken me back to the bishop. I'm so delighted to see you again," the bishop said to me before I could speak. "You forgot to take the candlesticks." With my eyes nearly popping out of my head, I was stunned by his words. The bishop had not only shown mercy to me, but also gave his only belongings of value to me. After the police left, the bishop told me, "Everyone deserves a second chance. Promise me that you will use the silver to become an honest man." He continued solemnly. Jean Valjean, my brother, you no longer belong to evil, but to good. It's your soul that I'm buying for you, and I give it to God. I left the bishop's house and drifted around the countryside. My thoughts were on my dark days in prison and on my wasted life. I was filled with anger and gloom, but as I sank into my misery, the bishop's words flashed through my mind. All at once, my thoughts of past events were somehow dismissed. The bishop's love and forgiveness had cast out my hatred for the world. From that moment on, I was truly free. I, Jean Valjean, became a changed man and never committed another crime.